assembled here, cleanse us of our sins and make us aware of the promise of your Son, that which we are gathered together in his name he is with them. Through this holy Eucharist we celebrate, make us worthy to sit at his table in the kingdom of heaven. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Breath, 
and a cacophony of voices are meant to evoke a collective fire in the belly that motivates us to do what we are called to do. Today we are assured that the Holy Spirit is with us as it was with them on that first enlivening Pentecost. As we prepare to celebrate this holy day, let us bring to mind those ways in which we have separated ourselves from any sins that we may have committed since our last confessions, and with a full resolve to sin no more, let us confess our sins quietly at this time to God. And now please say with me the Confidior. Almighty Father, you know my deepest secrets. I confess that I have, through my own fault, sinned against your holy laws, in my thoughts, in my words, and in what I have done or failed to do. I sincerely regret my sins, and I am truly sorry for offending you. I ask, Father, that in your mercy you pardon my sins. I promise to change my way of living so that through a deeper holiness I may better serve you throughout the rest of my life. I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, the Lord our God. As a penance for today's confession, I would ask you to keep in mind two priests of our church. Uh, I would ask you, I should say, two clergy of our church. I would ask you first to, to pray during today's Mass and to keep him in your prayers this day, uh, Subdeacon Justin Davio. Subdeacon was, uh, Davio was elevated in a um, Holy Mass yesterday, uh, where I elevated him from the uh, role of blessing to that of Subdeacon uh, to serve in our diocese and in our church. So please pray for him, and especially for his wife, Janice, who is, uh, is still hospitalized. Uh, she has gone in for the second time uh, to deal with uh, post-COVID uh, breathing problems. So please pray for Father, uh, for Deacon, Subdeacon Justin, and also for his wife, Janice, and their family. And I would also ask you to please keep in your prayers a son of our parish, Father Senior Joseph Soltishak, who is very ill, he has returned home now uh, to uh, continue uh, in his recovery process, but to please pray for him as well. I would ask you to do this as your penance uh, for today's uh, uh, confession. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you and with his authority vested in me. I do absolve you from all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For the Spirit of the Lord fills the world, is all-embracing, and knows what man says. Alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit.
Father, have mercy on us as you once descended upon the disciples in the upper room. So now once again descend on your church, inflame our hearts, enlighten our minds, and purify our souls. For together with the Father and the Son, you live and reign one God forever and ever. Heal our wounds, our strength renew, on our dryness for you. 
even though the disciples had locked the doors of the place where they were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood before them. Peace be with you, he said. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. At the sight of the Lord, the disciples rejoiced. Peace be with you, he said again. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive men's sins, they are forgiven them. If you hold them bound, they are held bound. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Now with all of that, then Paul 
reminds us too, there are different gifts, but the same Spirit. Different ministries, but the same Lord. Different works, but the same God who accomplishes all of them in every one. Now that's not in every one of the works, but in every one of us. God accomplishes the work through us, but truly there are different ministries, different gifts, different works, but there is the same Spirit. The same Spirit that we receive from God when Jesus said, receive the Holy Spirit. Now that's important. That's important because all that we do, all the works that we do, all the gifts that we have, our talents, all the ministries that we're called to, we're called to them and we're encouraged by the church to use the Spirit of God that's within us to accomplish these tasks. Simple example. Look at that back table. And you'll see jelly, you'll see tuna fish, and you'll see peanut butter. And all of that is something that is being accomplished through your good works. The Holy Spirit is in, in encouraging us in our hearts to make that pile of tuna fish and peanut butter and jelly as big as it can be, so that it can provide for the needs of the folk at Liberty House. And that's something that we can accomplish as the body of Christ, as one. You look out in the circular, the circular drive of the church. Well, we have those new lights in there, that are there, and they look real pretty, especially at night. I hope you like the picture. Uh, of the lights that are in today's bulletin. And by the way, for those who receive it electronically, you did get it. I just sent it out 20 minutes before the Mass began, and I apologize for being late with it. It's been a quite of a, it's been an interesting week. But I want you to know that even those lights, that is an accomplishment of the work that was done by the parish, by the parish committee. It was the work that was accomplished through the Holy Spirit. The assistance that is going out to the Church of Sacred Heart in Minneapolis, Minnesota, that all of our parishes are being encouraged to contribute to. And by the way, we did receive, I forgot to have it here, it's been quite a week, but we did receive a letter from the office of the Prime Bishop asking all of the parishes of our church to help that parish in Minneapolis, Minnesota, whose church was burned to the ground, to help them so that they can rebuild. And so you can certainly assist by making a donation. You can do it to the parish here. The monies will be forwarded. But all of that work is going on not only individually, and not only collectively as our parish, but it's going on as a church and it's going be, it's going forward because the Holy Spirit is calling us to that work. Yesterday, I had the opportunity to elevate a man to the office of subdeacon. He has taken on a different role because we hear the word role as well. He's taking on a different role, but the work remains the same. And all of us, whatever state we're in, we all have a role to play in the building up of the body of Christ, the church, through His Holy Spirit. And so, it's a simple message today, but it's one that we need to take to heart. Because the more we attune ourselves to the fact that God is working within us, as a people, as individuals, as a church, as the body of Christ, that God is working within us with giving us different gifts, different ministries, different works, 
But the same Spirit, the same God who accomplishes all of them in every one of us. If we open ourselves to the power of God and allow Him to work through us, we can do amazing things. And that's the message of today. Think about what happened on Pentecost Sunday, the first Pentecost Sunday. It says in the first reading from the Acts, on the day of Pentecost, it, when the day of Pentecost came, it found the brethren gathered in one place, like we are now. And suddenly from up in the sky there came a, a noise like a strong driving wind, and the Holy Spirit came to rest on all of those who were in the upper room, and it says they were filled with the Spirit, they began to express themselves in foreign tongues and make bold proclamation as the Spirit prompted them. And everybody who was there, every devout Jews from every nation under heaven, they heard the message and assembled this aloud crowd. They, they heard the noise, they came together, they were confused because they heard all of the apostles speaking to them in their own individual languages. And they asked in utter amazement, are not all these men speaking Galileans? How do they know our language? And then it concludes, yet each of us hears them speaking in his own tongue about the marvels that God has accomplished. We speak in different ways today. We speak not only in tongues, we speak in peanut butter, in tuna fish, and in jelly. We speak in baby diapers. We speak in tents and, and uh, uh, blue tarps. We speak in sleeping bags. We speak in food. We speak in socks. We speak in all different ways and proclaim the message of God and the hope in His Son, Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit that is within us. We speak of all the goodness that lies in God and how it is open to every man and woman and child to receive that goodness by receiving the Holy Spirit. So on this Pentecost Sunday, let us celebrate the opportunity that God gives us to be His instruments and allow God to work with us for the building up of His kingdom. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now let us rise and let us together proclaim the faith that we share. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified on the conscious Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. I believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
sanctify our gifts, guide us in truth, defend us from evil, and enrich us with grace. For together with the Father and the Son, you live and reign, one God forever and ever.
In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope through the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. The cup of blessing which we bless is not a participation in the blood of Christ. The bread which we break is not a participation in the body of Christ. May the union of divinity and humanity of Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I may be peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church. To grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And now, maintaining our safe distances, let us share with one another a sign. Peace be with you all. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. Let us join with in prayer with those who for their own reasons will not be able to share in the Holy Communion today. Let us pray together the act of spiritual communion. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen.
Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to the table.
Lord, may I possess with a pure heart that which I have taken as food. May the gift I have received bring me healing and strength now and forever. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. Alleluia. The Lord be with you.
cleaning it and repairing it uh, after a winter's worth of dust and dirt and accumulation. So please help the uh, committee. Uh, they will be gathering uh, on Saturday uh, at the cemetery. And for uh, any further information in that regard, uh, I would ask you to speak, uh, if you would, to Ray Kachatka after the Mass today. Uh, but, the, uh, but we do need your help uh, to prepare, and also on, uh, on Memorial Day Monday, uh, to take chairs and other items from the cathedral uh, to be placed at, at the uh, cemetery for use during the Mass. The rest of the announcements are in the bulletin. I direct your attention to it. And again, I remind you, if you can help the uh, Sacred Heart of Jesus Parish in Minneapolis, Minnesota, uh, we will be grateful for that. The Parish Committee will be addressing that uh, sometime uh, this week or in the near future uh, so that we can send aid to them. Uh, they are in need of it. The Diocese of our church, uh, our Eastern Diocese, has sent a gift of $5,000 uh, to help the uh, parish in St. Paul, in Minneapolis, I'm sorry, Minnesota. We've also sent from the diocese another $5,000 to help the parish in San Antonio, Texas, which two months ago underwent severe flooding. So uh, please, if you can, help in this instance. Karen, if you would. Mm -hmm. 